Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Meeting. Uh, today, we are 13 August 2024. Around the virtual table, Mark and I are the alone person or the unlucky not in holidays. Okay, we are. I hope all the other will enjoy the sun or the holidays or the days off. Uh, let's get started with the announcement. Oh, I forgot to prepare this one. Sorry, that's the summer heat. So last week, uh, let, let me just go back because we had a lot of releases last week. So let me check what we have had last week. I can I can call them out to you if you'd like. Or I can yeah, type I... them in. We don't need to make you type them, Damien. I yep. can type them in. Let okay, perfect. Those notes, because there's no reason you and I can't work to collaborate on this document. Was released. So I may need you to paste the link to the to the security advisory. No, I may need no? you to paste the link to these notes. I'm not sure I've still got it. Oh, the links to the notes are are on the Zoom chat. If it says here, perfect. For you. That's yeah. So long as they're oh, there they are. Great. That's what I needed. Just needed them somewhere. Thank you. Okay, so. Successfully as part of this of the 2024 eight no uh eight set Jenkins security mm. advisory. Uh, I haven't checked the 2.472 release. Uh, it is 2.472 release is running now started on time it started on time it's now been running for a little over i think a little over an hour i checked it 30 minutes ago it was 45 minutes in okay. and is was running at that time without any problem okay cool oh as you said is working uh spring security update part of this release is that is that uh, no not not quite no. not quite jetty 12 uh, ee8 jetty 12. it's this is phase three of of four phases and phase three is jetty 12 ee8 it won't be till jetty 12 ee9 that we can change spring security hardware operation Okay, that's right. for the releases. Mm -hmm. um, we what had you... uh, the security advisory last week, so. R right, so do you want a separate item for LTS? Is that what you'd like as a separate item on the uh, we LTS? Yes, we had uh, last week. Right. LTS two point I don't remember we four are... five two four five two dot, dot four dot four and two dot four six two dot one so four, four six, six two, two dot, two one. dot one right release uh were released with success. Mm -hmm. Jenkins infrastructure was up to date less along with plugins and remoting. Correct. Hours after the advisory. Um, I think that's all. Not Docker uh, controller image need a pipeline fix for an edge case linux release linux images release on trusted.ci uh, lts line which is not the latest lts to allow parallel publication of the images. Otherwise, GDK 11 images must be done manually, like 
last week. So thanks, Hervé, for the tooling here, because despite the hedge case bug, that, of, that allow security officer and security team to build all the images at the same time. We didn't do that last week because it was the first time, but it's confirmed it will, it will work Excellent. once we have fixed that bug. Given the job takes 12 to 20 minutes, doing it three times is clearly uh, uh, an obstacle for them. So happy next time to have something uh, faster. I don't have any other announcements as far as I can tell. Do you, do you uh, Mark? No. Nope. Okay. So let's continue upcoming calendar next week, 20 August 2024. We will have a team meeting and we will have a new weekly release 2.472. No, no, so that's no, no. Oh, so if you're talking about next weekly, that's three. Sorry, I should have put that. So that will be three because today's is two. Oh yeah. yeah, true. Okay, good catch. Uh, next LTS Alex is a release lead that will be two point four sixty two dot two. Do you remember when when will it be? Yeah, let's good good question. The next the the release candidate September. is twenty one, and the release will be for uh, September. For I'll September. put it in. Yeah, great. Um, we don't have any security advisory announced. We already right. had one. No announced, week. no, no announced published. So, yep. I see something from the 12th of 12 August. Yeah. This is where Daniel said that okay. the advisory has been updated and improved with a, a solution that can safeguard people who can't upgrade to the latest version of Jenkins. Oh, no, that's cool. That's really, really cool. Um, oh, am I on the wrong? I'm, I'm absolutely on the wrong one right now. Okay, I'm back here. Okay, um, so upcoming credential expirations, uh, around three to four weeks, we have we've had automatic uh, pull requests for uh, the two following elements. So I need to create an issue and we can track them. Not mandatory to have them on the next milestone, but they will be there by default and anyone able to take them will. Uh, I've added the dates. I'm currently checking on my other screen, the team calendar, just in case we still have things. So next week, nothing. 31 in two weeks. Yes. Uh, oh, expiration of the release score as your credential. Oh. So the vault access and so another issue to create, uh, no, here, 2024, 831, release.ci Jenkins IO, Azure client to access secret vault expires. So that means we need to update this, otherwise the hmm. core release won't work anymore. So we have issues to create for the three of them. Mm -hmm. And first week of September, so credential for trusted, that's the one here and the automatic pull request work and five September, oh, digital ocean P80s. 2024-905 digital ocean P80s expires, okay. So these are four issue, four upcoming issues. Next major event is the DevOps World Virtual Online, September 17. So all of us Jenkins officers and Jenkins board will present and we, you will have the opportunity to ask questions. It's an online event, so don't hesitate to attend. Uh, and 19 September, CD Mini Summit in Vienna. So we have Bruno Varachten presenting and Olivier Werner leading. So thanks for them. Nice opportunity if you're in the area to meet Jenkins contributors. Mm. Anything else on calendar announcements, Mark? Nothing else for me. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the current uh, 
current consumption. Uh, okay, so what did I do? So we were at um, 1.8K as far as I remember. I don't know, oh, I messed up forecast at 4.7. Oh, maybe I, maybe I, I don't know, but that's, that's, I, I just replaced July with the invoice amount. So maybe the, maybe we in, entered it, the, the approximation, sorry, I deleted it. No, no problem. I'm reopening on the other screen, but the takeaway is that we're having an, a bit more consumption than usual. I have, I'm only, I'm only working on the infrastructure this week. So I didn't have time to check exactly what was the source of cost. Uh, mm. so I will want to do it upcoming week. I hope I will have time that start to be, it's not, as you said last week, Mark, it's not that important, but still I will want to be sure we don't have a uh, leaking resources in terms of costs. Right. Well, and, and saving money is a good thing. So that makes sense. Um, issues to create, uh, so, oh, oh no, I, I know, I think I wrote on the previous one. I don't, I'm sure I wrote here. Yes, of course. Okay. I messed up last week notes with today's. Ah, ah okay, got it. Okay, so you already fixed it, that's cool. Just checking invoice, okay. That's the one I wanted to get. I take care of going back in time if needed. So. Back to Azure. So a few elements. Uh, we will be removing resources from the public artifact caching proxy. We'll discuss this later. So that will decrease a bit the consumption and also outbound bandwidth uh, because uh, resources on the sponsorship were consuming effectively outbound bandwidth from the public link. Um, also, as part of the RM64 uh, workload updates. It looks like we have an opportunity. We have currently two plus two machines on the public cluster. One not pool is system pool as and is underused. Microsoft recommend to dedicate uh, system pool, but they, are, they also recommend to use free machines at eight CPUs and 32 gigabyte each for system pools for high quality. These mm. machines are underused as per the metrics. And we just have a few services left over on uh, still sticking on X on uh, Intel machines. So that will be worth it to have everything running on only two machines. So we could have beefy machines, pack things and still decrease the global costs. Uh, opportunity to move the private cluster on the sponsorship. So release CI, it's agents. So one build a week and LTSs. And infra CI and all of its, uh, I think it's only the controller now, but it's still consuming and we have two services. Hmm. Um, in any case, we need to, to create a brand new cluster and migrate workloads in it because we wanted to use the new method we use with private clusters. So the API is never exposed publicly. So we don't have to deal with this annoying public IP uh, allow list. Um, sir, the that trusted, sorry. Uh, that's already a technique that we've been using elsewhere. This is just making us more consistent. Exactly. Got it. Thanks. Okay. And eventually we could move third CI, trusted CI and the uh, trusted uh, permanent agents to the sponsorship at least for six months, because that will be, that will use the sponsorship credits in any case. Mm -hmm. Um, finally, something I realized while working on the new update center, we are using two manage Redis servers, mm. but given the low amount of requests and data we use, that will be absolutely worth it to use the same Redis instance for both get Jenkins IO and update Jenkins IO, so the mirror orbit usages. Uh, because the uh, mirror orbit support pointing to different databases, we already did that. Databases ID zero is the production of get Jenkins IO and one is staging. Mm -hmm. I believe we can have 10 databases per instance, as far as I remember. So given the cost of manage Redis instance, that will be worth it. Ah, good. Okay. So this would, they would remain independent, independent data stores. 
exactly. but but would be under a single managed service. Exactly. That's the same pattern as what we do for PostgreSQL, for instance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I will detail the costs and the uh, potential cost saving and et cetera on the issue. Uh, okay, I think these are the source for decreasing the costs. Uh, on the sponsorship account, we have consumed 10K during the month of July. So that means that's good news. We are using resources that Microsoft gave us. That's really cool. Uh, right now we have 60, 63,000 credits until May 2025. So that's really good. Um, given the usage rate, we will most probably run out of credit in January though. Okay, so so, but we also hope to to finish the spring security project in September. Mm -hmm. So, but, but there there is a very we we didn't expect those resources to last forever, and the AWS donation hasn't we haven't started consuming it. So so I'm not I'm not desperate to hear that, but it's a good thing to know that we will need to plan to consume the, the Amazon donation, the AWS donation, not just the Azure donation. Exactly. I think it will be worth it to migrate CI Jenkins IO workloads and only this one. So CI Jenkins IO, Azure VM agents and Kubernetes agents in October, directly everything in the new AWS accounts. Mm. So we will spread the, the usage of the, the credits especially since the sponsorship can last until May, uh, that will be worth if we move these uh, long-term resources to it, if we can wait until uh, uh, next spring before thinking about other sponsors. Great. I propose we we take a dec formal decision in end of September when we will do planning uh, okay. because we will see how much credits did we consume in September. Right, that makes sense, good. Um, Digital Ocean is still low usage as well. Um, so my plan was to move the current tiny virtual machines that are currently running on AWS for CloudBees account. We have usage and census. Moving these two single virtual machines to Digital Ocean will ensure we keep using Digital Ocean credits. If we Digital Ocean don't want to renew our credit in December, we move these machines somewhere else, mm -hmm. but that will be a way for us to still keep using their credits. I mean, we have 16K left here and we I are like already that. using this for archive Jenkins IO. I like that very much. Uh, AWS CloudBees account, we consume 6.5K and we are forecasted at 6.8 for August. That's a bit more and it's, 90% uh, usage of outbound bandwidth on the PKG slash update Jenkins IO machine. Most probably mm -hmm. update center. 90%? Yeah. Okay, so that means we've got a big win there to to when we when we finish the updates.jenkins.io transition, we have a very big win. Good. Exactly. Okay. So for the upcoming week, nothing else on the credit except opening issues and starting working on tiny stuff. Great. Okay, uh, that has been a busy, uh, busy two weeks. Um, we had a lot of blocked user. I propose we start with this topic, if it's okay for you, Mark. Yes. So, do you want me to to bring all the blocked users into one chunk? Uh, I'm doing it. You're doing so it. Okay. Can great. you give us a, a, a summary of what happened? What is happening? Uh, Sure. Right so, so um, for for many weeks, um, maybe probably months by now, we've seen a pattern where um, a user will arrive created in account in the account app, and then spam a single issue, or most recently, as most two issues, with a comment that includes a a link to something that's not Jenkins related. Uh, they'll link to this site or that site. Uh, and we would detect that, disable the, the account, and uh, delete the comment. However, uh, over the weekend, so beginning last Friday, a new form of vandalism started. 
And that new form of vandalism was a much broader impact where anywhere from 10 to 40 issues were closed and closed without the desire to be closed of the, um, of the person who's working on the issue. And so when detected, I undid, I reverted the changes by one at a time touching those bugs, disabled the user that was doing it, but then the user created a new account and did the same thing again and created a new account and did the same thing again. And so we had three instances of this much larger scale JIRA spam. Uh, and finally, after the second, I invoked the, the uh, circuit breaker on account app, which means I blocked all registration for new accounts. That naturally had a downstream negative impact that we received several reports and through the Jenkins help desk saying, hey, I can't register for a new account. And then yesterday, an instance of this same thing occurred. I detected it after two changes, block the user and uh, then enable the circuit breaker. So the circuit breaker right now is on, meaning it is blocking all registration. And, and it will stay that way until, I didn't want to be distracted while we're getting the current weekly release out. So it is on until midnight, uh, midnight today, UTC. So the, the complication for me is I don't really know how to best handle this. When I like Tim Jacomb's change, he has added the specific email address to a block list that's in the source code of the account app. And I think that's a positive. Uh, the, the predecessor spam, the, the one at a time, we're always using distinct email addresses. So it, a block list wouldn't work, but this particular most aggressive one recently was consistently using the same uh, email. So by blocking one email, we may block the problem. However, the, if we look at the, at the list of accounts that were being used for the spam, you'll notice that one of them is Colleen Waite. That's my spouse's account that I created when I needed an extra account and I borrowed it by assigning the, the email address of this spamming user, hoping that they would not be able to register with whatever software they're using to do it. They reset the password and started spamming with Colleen's account. So I shut down Colleen's account, deleted the account and uh, but it, it shows that the technique I was using won't work. We can't just create an account that has that email address. They'll then just use the reset password to reset the password. Oh, I see. So we could uh, keep the account created and block it on Keycloak. There might be an option. I don't know how key clock is working, but no, 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 because account Jenkins IO doesn't check the key clock attributes. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but given given Tim's technique, um, once the new version of account app is deployed, that email account will be blocked. Uh, however, all they have to do is change the email. I also sent a an abuse report to Google to Gmail, um, but naturally i'm not sure they will respond because the abuse is not actually coming directly from the gmail account right the abuse is is a user who is using that gmail account to re reauthorize themselves um we could block the ip that's an interesting question In I, didn't... Dog, I will show you off uh off a share screen share how to go on Datadog, check the account's app logs per email. So you can check the when there is a blocked account, you can check why, what is the reason from the code. Mm, and okay. you can see IP of the users. So we could also add this as an additional. Again, that's only one layer of protection. It won't, it's not an absolute one, but still, if it helps 
Well, it's, and and again, if it if we find that that is coming from a single IP, that's a very low cost way to to do the block, exactly. where where instead of inventing some massive thing, blocking a single IP address is is very very low cost. I like that. Good. I didn't realize that we had logs of the public IPs. That's really a good idea. Jeez. Now, if they're using a cloud resource or somehow masking themselves, it won't help. But why not? That sounds really promising. The, I know that Hervé uh, mentioned uh, months ago a public tool. There is a public database of spammer IPs as well. Ah. So maybe that could be worth adding a tiny piece of code in account, Jenkins IO, that mm -hmm. check the public IP against this database. Uh, looks like it's the right time for doing it. And so that will block and add a message saying, okay, you are in that uh, forbidden list. So please uh, do something. Good. Okay. Um, I saw, uh, so that means we still have changes to rollback. Is that correct? Uh, no, no. As far as I know, oh. all the changes that needed to be reverted, well, let, okay, maybe I should describe what, what I perceive as sufficient and not sufficient, and then, then we may have to change my definition of sufficient. Okay. Okay, so, so my perception was when a, a, an issue was had its state changed from open or in progress to close, that had to be reverted. So I, I changed that. I fixed state. When an issue had its priority inside a sprint changed, I did not care because we don't use sprints in the Jenkins project. They're merely a, a remnant of things done long ago. So I don't care what, when an issue was reordered in its occurrence in some other list, I didn't care. State changes were, and, and that were, those were the primary three categories of things that were there, just state changes, they're actually by this particular spamming user were not junk comments. So it's a very different, it's a different kind oh, of spammer okay. than the pre the other spammers, the other spammers, one, one comment and never return. Whereas this one is many state changes and obviously comes back again with a different account when okay. that, when the original account is blocked. Interesting. Okay, so that okay, that's less effort than I thought we had for this one. Cool. That's good news because it's not an easy one. Well, and and that one, that one is that one is for me that was the most dangerous one because the last time we had large scale vandalism, we had to restore from backup, and I do yeah. not want to lose the the most recently added content in the bug database, which is what happens if we have to restore from backup. I agree. So, so if for me, the do a, a half half baked or a partial, but adequate job of reverting is good enough. So long as I don't have to spend every day doing this all day long. Okay, so let's go with the uh, efficient way. I will say, um, I saw also some. That's a way to resurrect the that topic, the topic of replacing accounts Jenkins IO at all. Right. or having someone working on it to implement most of the problems it has today. So as a reminder, 2019 was project by Olivier Vernon to replace account Jenkins IO by Keycloak. Uh, back in time, there were some blockers, especially regarding the usernames that could have impact on the security of the project. As far as I can tell, all of these problems are gone. And theoretically, we could start switching to key clock. However, we still need to evaluate all of these elements because that was uh, five years ago almost. And we need to do a full, um, so a full audit. And we also need to switch key clock to key clock X, which is uh, still key clock, but using uh, what's the name of that uh, brand new uh, uh, Java server system, Quarkus. Oh. 
Okay. And in fact, since 2020, Keycloak, Keycloak X is Keycloak, but not running with an heavy Java system, but instead using Quarkus. And in fact, the Helm chart we're using in production is stuck on what they call 17 legacy, which has stopped updating except for security updates since two years at least. So if we choose to continue with Keycloak, the first thing, and maybe we should do that even if we don't keep Keycloak, but right now switching the Elm charts to have the latest Keycloak version could help. So we could have a good comparison. Mm. So, um, yeah. so just to be sure I've understood. So today our current Keycloak must have some form of maintenance to bring it bring it up to date. Uh, it. It's not kept up to date. Feature right. feature speaking. It's, okay, but but they are still security patching it. They are still exactly okay. Exactly. Good. Keycloak is not public facing. It used to be, but we removed the public facing part because it was a beta system, hmm. um, and we removed it because it has been notoriously uh, unstable during years. Now it's way more stable, but only for our own usage. And if we want to have it uh, front-facing, we need it to be HA and, and reliable. Uh, moving to Keycloak X will improve reliability. It will consume less. It works way better for the high availability system. Uh, but yeah, we have some work to do in that area to absolutely remove Akun's, Akun's app. Why am I mentioning this? It's because right now, um, the automa automa automating creating account on account app is really easy with a bot or scripts or any kind of LLM system now. It's really easy with the way we are dealing with the account creation. Using Keycloak uh, with the public facing or an alternative such as Go Authentic or any other else, we could implement user steps, adding a captcha adding a, an email validation without immediately sending the password. So you need to confirm using a link. Those, those will add steps. These steps will make it a bit more difficult, not impossible, of course, but if it's more difficult to automate, then the probability of having such kind of spam will be will change. And the last element on this one, to be considered is that tools such as Go Authentic or uh, others such as OAuth um, would change from using a single referential database, which is the, the LDAP, moving to some an ECSO system. Mm. That would so that need to be discussed because it has impact on our Jenkins instance, but that needs also to work with Jira and Artifactory. But that could also provide a nice user experience because this system could allow merging Jenkins accounts and with GitHub account, for instance. And that could help delegate authentication ports to another system, such as you could reuse Gmail or GitHub authentication that right. are pretty solid. And same for autonomy of the users. They could delete or change their account without requiring a nice application on our own. So that's a lot of problem that could be solved, but at the cost of uh, security and technical analysis. Um, if we need to change, um, I'm a good fan of Go Authentic. That means we need to change to SAML authentication realm on Jenkins, for instance. So that's ah, a different okay. pattern and we need to think about this uh, carefully. Uh, so my proposal is that we can on short term uh, start upgrading Keycloak X and see if Keycloak could be a drop-in replacement soon. I like that. That sounds sounds very good. Uh, medium term. Switching away from accounts, Jenkins, I.O. adding user registration steps to make automation more difficult. CAPTCHA, email validation, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. That's all for me on the Jira vandalism. Do you have something else to add? That is all for me. 
Um, so regarding the, the issues done, uh, we had new user, uh, new contributor on the Jenkins organization. So welcome Jean-Marc and Pere. Uh, we had the credential rotation that happened on third CI Jenkins IO, the service principal using for the Azure virtual machines. Uh, what did we have? Update, so LTS update. We had an LTS. We wanted to update in our infrastructure. That was done quickly. So thank, that's a usual issue. Uh, of course, Murphy's Law says a day with a big security advisory. The morning, there is a hard drive full somewhere. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, remind yep. me, what was your fix there? I know you said you fixed it. Uh, it was... So, the, the problem comes uh, comes from the new AZ copy tasks. Ah, right, right. It was garbage collection. Center. Right, I remember exactly. Now. Garbage collection that was not implemented. The logs are were kept, but not garbage collected. Cleaned up manually once. She see, and we implemented the garbage collections. The garbage collection was let's delete log file older than 10 days. So order of magnitude, these logs were 400 gigabytes uncompressed. So 100 gigabytes compressed. Oh, nice That's savings. impressive. So yeah, we'll update it. center as volumetry, which is quite impressive. The, um, the, build, the Jenkins build number on this job is really impressive. <laughs> Yeah, meaning meaning very large when you say impressive, yeah. right? Which yeah. which for me would say depressing, but okay, that's great. Yes, I mean that means Jenkins is able to have so much build. Right. Uh, we we would really rather not exceed a thirty-two bit integer, just so we're clear. Yeah, I'm interested on in knowing if it's the world record or if someone else <laughs> has the worst Jenkins build. <laughs> okay, that could be a nice one for the Jenkins world to ask. There you go. Uh, next, we had a few issues, but now fixed regarding mirrors uh, for get Jenkins IO. Uh, so, get Jenkins IO mirrors. Uh, first, X mission uh, had a certificate update. So, thanks, James and Mark, for uh, noting this, and Daniel for pointing us the real issue. We contacted them. So, we removed the mirror to avoid our user being impacted. Uh, we contacted them, they fixed the issue, and we had it back. The, uh, we had it back. Um, it's weird because the mirror should be monitored by Datadog, and I did not see any issue, so I need to check why. Oh, good question. Right. I didn't even check my monitoring. I think you're right. Same thing. My monitoring should of course i didn't look at my monitoring during the downtime so so it may have detected a good point we we do separately check those endpoints don't we we mm -hmm. really do we're checking yep. certificate validity on those separate endpoints and um, if we're not we should yep. uh, absolutely i uh, i i bet that we are checking on http because mirrors used to be http only for years oh. mm -hmm. and i'm sure that's a legacy monitor so gotta check and we also had an issue with our uh, new mirror in India. Uh, they had an issue on their own. So it's not Datadog monitored. Need to add to Datadog monitor, monitor for early detection because I detected it only because I was checking the X mission one. Mm, right. Not a blocker, but still better to detect it early. Um, we had an issue with contributor spotlights uh, not deployed. Uh, so it's front-end development, so I don't want to dig on that topic. Mm. Uh, the issue, just so the knowledge is shared. Uh, so first, good catch, because you saw that it was blocked. Thanks for opening the issue. The problem was that the Node.js version specific, that there is a Node.js version specified on the build, and it wasn't kept uh, uh, in sync with what our agent had. Ah, okay. um, I thought that specifying a Node.js version would have ensured 
SDF to install it if missing. That was the initial goal to avoid that kind of problem. Mm -hmm. Looks like the implementation is not doing what we expected. So there might be fixes to do on this. I don't want to spend any time on this personally. Um, but if the problem happened, usually there is a second pull request, an automated pull request, the one I merge, which bump the Node.js version to fit what is the default version on production for us. It has been automated. So you merge the other pull request and you go. Um, yeah, there might be improvement on the build, but yeah, that's not something we run too, too much. Okay. Um, wow, yeah. Uh, as part of the ACP issues that Basil and other contributor had, uh, we saw error message on the Azure console about the public cluster. These issues were creating a lot of strain on the outbound network request on that cluster, meaning request of the mirror of the mirror bits to scan mirrors, request of the current public ACP, the one that was failing a lot. Uh, it, it was creating network contention. So this has been fixed. There were issues that were present since one year and a half since the IPv6 setup. Uh, this issue, I thought they were fixed, they weren't, so I had to, had to fix them myself. Uh, cleaned up, everything is documented, that problem shouldn't happen anymore. The main takeaway here is that uh, it has been caused in January this year. It was, we had the error before, but the error was not impactful until January 2024 because that's when Azure changed some behavior announced since one year regarding the double stack features. And we were using double stack in load balancer where we shouldn't. So now the load balancer are single stack. We have one IPv4 and one IPv6. Both are going in the same direction and it fulfill our setup. Okay, so it was, it was a latent change that we had missed. Great, thank you. Yeah, that we didn't miss it. Uh, but we didn't uh, work on it. Ah, That's I see. Different. Okay. Just something that needed our attention and didn't get it. Got exactly. it. Thanks. Okay. Um, a credential rotation on on the RPU that went very well. Uh, that's, that's the fourth time that we do that change without any issue. So it's well documented. Uh, so that's that require an artifactory administrator to generate a new token. Everything is documented on trusted CI on the credential description and on the issues. Um, Andrew Bayer now has access to usage Jenkins IO. He has a new VPN account because he forgot the setup of the previous one. Uh, and that was the opportunity for him to, to remind us that he's still doing manual uh, aggregation and Kosuke as well and Kosuke has been bitten by this problem because his server is not under VPN and he doesn't have a static IP. So we are waiting from Kosuke to spend a bit of work, but we don't have stats since 24 July when we applied that this particular change. And uh, it's, yep. it, it's, we don't have the stat, the stats are still being, well, when do the stats, when does the raw stats data expire and we lose access to it that Kosuke couldn't get it anymore? Or do we, we still have plenty of time now before, because we're storing um, it somewhere, right? I assume we some... Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure, are you speaking about the Google stats? No, no, I was more no. that the things that, so what, what Kosuke does is he get, I understood he gathers the data and anonymizes it. And that, that oh, gather and anonymize, there's some place from which he, where he is collecting that data that's the raw data, right? He gathers the raw data, anonymizes it, and then Andrew converts the anonymized into present into presentable form. Um, the the raw data behind that Kosuke grabs does it have an expiration that we will lose it if it's oh. the, if he if he doesn't collect it soon enough. Uh, so I. My understanding is that the data is collected on his machine, but it's okay. not sent to use agent Kinsayo. That's the sending part that is blocked. It, 
this access to upload the anonymized data to usage. I'm not sure if I, am I clear on. Okay, I, I, so so we're not in. So I think what you're. I was worried. Are we in danger of having data expire before we get it all the way to usages? And it sounds like we're not. Exactly. Okay, great. That's you. You've addressed my concern then. Uh, that's worth asking Kosuke to check though, because uh, I assume it's an automated process on the machine on his basement, mm -hmm. so we might need him to spend some time on it. Okay. Uh, we finished the Temerine GDK upgrade. So two actions. Uh, we upgraded the LTS uh, controller that now have the latest uh, July Temerine updates. And uh, both uh, Jay and I paired on updating the S390X agents. So that give him an idea on how to automate in the future uh, that part. So we are done on this one. Uh, and finally, in order to unblock Basil, even though there were some dependent bots versus uh, Renova bot updates and issues with that specific version, we've rem I've removed as as an administrator the uh, the artifact mentioned by Basil specifically for remoting uh, with that 9999 snapshot version because it's not used anymore and that unblocked him. Good. Um, another big action we had to do, so since one month, one month and a half, we were having on Docker pools or Docker push, but mainly Docker pools, a lot of rate limitations. So HTTP 429 errors. It appears, thanks to a pairing session, thanks uh, with Tim, uh, that it's not the usual API rate limit from Docker. That uh, Because if you, so let, let me restate. Docker, when you do an anonymous pool, uh, only allow you 500 pools every six hours per public IP. We have two and we increase to four the outbound public IP on CI Jenkins IO. So theoretically, unauthenticated, we could have 2,000 uh, pools on every six hours. If you authenticate, then usually you have an increase that used to be 50k uh, per day. Now it's 5k better. So a lot of users got bitten by this. And we thought that was our problem, even though we added authentication. However, um, in fact, we hit the problem with the ATH, where the authentication happens on the client side on Docker, not on the daemon side. That's the client that sends to the when you need when you need to pull with authentication it sends uh, and generates token on each time so on the ATH where they use a smart docker on docker by sharing the docker socket using another client inside a container to generate container and it's hard to change this um, that was making the authentication of so the ATH was uh, eating a lot of uh, rate limited with team, with team, with the help of team, we realized that we weren't eating API rate limits, but the anti-abuse system on Docker Hub that also had this threshold decrease as part of that program. That uh, anti-abuse system is a combination of uh, that's a, a, a let's say a science formula between amount of requests and amount of data downloaded. Because when we authenticate, we have an unlimited account. We have no normal API rate limits. That's good news, but that means that doesn't fix our issue. So we created a Docker mirror, transparent mirror, using a Docker CE feature, using Azure Container Registry. Uh, that's a recent feature that Azure delivered beginning of July. So that's really recent, and Tim pointed it out. So now every Docker engine not the Kubernetes cluster, only the Docker engine when we do Docker pool and Docker builds on all the controllers except release CI, but all the others, they have a private endpoint into the private network and they have unauthenticated access to this registry. And that registry is caching transparently like ACP for artifacts. It only caches though the Docker hub images ATH has uh, uh, images stored on Quay.io. They are not cached, but there is no rate limit, so we don't really care. 
We could use that registry for internal and private images in the future. <laughs> and we are already caching 60 gigabytes of data. We have 500 gigabytes free. So that clearly had a good impact. We haven't seen any rate limit since then. Even with a day with three full releases, that's a lot of pull requests and Docker pulls. So is it clear? Do you? It, it is. Does Thank it... you. That that sounds like a major win. So ACR, the the thing that you worked on with Tim Jacom, has given us caching of hub.docker.com, and and therefore we've reduced our burden on them probably improved our performance and and we're and that acr is not is it publicly visible i assume not it's only no, it's used not. inside inside our own network therefore yeah that's great thank you the the the, the private network stuff has been a bit tedious because it was the first time i worked on it mm. uh even team wasn't up to date on all the elements so that's that tells me okay that wasn't a easy one however we learned a lot i plan to do a knowledge sharing session with the rest of the team when they are back from holidays because we could use this for and we already started to use it for acp or other services all right okay we had a few issues and uh closed as not planned um a duplicate and mostly Jen Jenkins account. So I was a oh. bit uh, incisive on these accounts, mainly uh, each time there were the slides, a tip saying, oh, I want to you go to community Jenkins IO or I want access to my Jenkins instance. I was closing and mm -hmm. telling them not to do this. Uh, if it's okay, I will continue doing this. Um, well, uh, I, I like your, your more more active, intentional, look, let's not waste time waiting for them to acknowledge we're closing it. And if they object, they can reopen and and we discuss further. Exactly. I propose we keep it for one week and we reevaluate based on the kind of pattern we want for account. If we need to manually validate each account, et cetera. Um, I have an issue open. We will look at it uh, later. Uh, but one of the proposals is that we could update the accounts Jenkins IO registration page and home page with a big, big message saying, if you want to go on community Jenkins IO, you don't need an account here. Mm -hmm. If you need uh, an account on Jenkins on your, on your own uh, system, then read the documentation here. You don't need an account. It's only right. for. That won't change everything. If people don't want to read, they won't. But as I showed on, uh, on that new issue, um, we are still having Google indexed page mentioning uh, accounts Jenkins IO. If you search for Jenkins and account, uh, the third link is user account on Jenkins, which is an old wiki page. Oh, that okay. points to accounts Jenkins IO. Okay. Uh, so. That's not all, but it's a third result. So unindexing this one and adding message might improve the situation. Good. Uh, now, work in progress. So we covered the vandalism in Jira. Okay. We have two active issues about the humans that answered or really good LLM system that answered to my questions. Right. I mean, that could be it. Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, one looks legit. The other, not really. But I want to avoid that, and we will keep the same policy. Okay. Uh, Mark, can you give us a summary of the Windows Slaves plugin? Yes, so, so James Nord opened this one. I think he's... My initial approach was try to try to convince myself that James was wrong. We should not end the distribution. And my attempt failed. Everything I looked at said, no, James is right. We should stop distributing the Windows Slaves plugin. It's, it's called WMI Windows Agents plugin in its name so that we don't use that, that slave terminology. Um, but as I looked and I put the arguments here, and then if you navigate further down, there is a pull request 
about three items from the bottom of the list, that thing, open it, because it's got even more description of why we should do this. Now, Daniel Beck and I are having a discussion. Is it really the right time to do this? Uh, and the, the Daniel's question is, hey, what about the users who are still using this thing and using an old Windows operating system, Windows Server 2012? And my answer is that as far as I'm concerned, Windows Server 2012 is end of life for the Jenkins project because Windows Server 2012 can only get security updates if you purchase them from Microsoft. And we don't support operating systems that require a purchased support contract for security updates. Not Red Hat Linux 7, not Ubuntu 18, and not Windows Server 2012. Perfect. I'm not sure I've persuaded Daniel yet though. So this conversation is ongoing and that's okay. We'll, um, we'll continue it. Either we will stop distributing them now or sometime in the future we will stop distributing because it does not make sense to, to place this plugin onto the Jenkins controller for most Jenkins users. They have no Windows operating system that can use its features, not one. Okay. It, would that make sense to add a, a proposal, a warning on the, once the plugin is deprecated, telling, hey, you can use WinSW to have a service management to start inbound agent and, or open SSH because both are working on Windows 2012. Right. And we actually have a documentation page on Jenkins.io that tells them how to use uh, inbound agent as a service. And the deprecation page, we deprecated this plugin two years ago. And okay. the deprecation already says, here are the alternatives. So we've been telling people, and and if we looked at the at the the usage pattern, it's great because it has gone down by twenty thousand installations over twelve months. So users are stopping their use of this their installation of the plugin. That's good, right? It's just I think James's point is correct. It's not enough that it, it is a service to the users if we stop delivering this thing because they don't benefit by having it installed on their system. Yep, makes sense. I, I remember uh, production Jenkins usage I had years, years ago, even before working for the Jenkins project. And it was already a bad thing to use WMI right. and uh, starting an inbound agent was the way to go. I remember doing it on Windows 2012. So. Exactly. If if you must use Windows Server 2012, then use an inbound agent, configure it as a service, and or let it open run. SSH. It works very well on 2012. Uh, okay, it didn't work for me. So to th the, oh. the, the the Microsoft supported Open SSH is on 2019 oh, yeah. and newer, right? Yes. And I I like no, Microsoft's I Open SSH. Either you have a Sigwin distribu official oh. distribution certified by Microsoft, or if you don't. Because now it's it's out, but uh, I've used for years uh, the open SSH for Windows, the ah. server itself, the, the whole, whole one. Uh, next issue, ACP. That one has been uh, hard to solve. I The situation improved, but so uh, what happens is that CI Jenkins IO, depending on the type of agent running, was either using a private ACP instance when we were using container, the container while talking to another container inside the cluster, so really efficient, or the virtual machine while using the public ACP hosted on another network on the public cluster. First, it create uh, so it was having a lot of HTTP five something errors. There were two kind of errors. Most of the errors seen on the let's say ten past days that Basil mentioned where issue where the Nginx ACP instances were timeouting when trying to connect to the upstream system, so artifactory. So since they reached a certain timeout to connect and download data, they were answering a server internal error because that's, that's what we expect from a proxy. Mm -hmm. um, so in order to solve this issue, there were two main things. First, it was, uh, we had 99% of the errors on the public uh, public ACP. So first step has been, hey, let's move everything under the private ACP. Less network constraints, less network ops, because now we only have to go from a subnet 
to a container, we only have one level of NAT and instead of seven through network peering. So less cost on the CDF, less constraint of our public services because we don't need it to be public, less risk. And also no more HTTPS TLS termination. Maven can use mirrors in HTTP. And since we are inside a private network and that Maven check the contents, we don't need TLS termination. So less CPU usage. And we removed one component, the ingress. We have direct connection from the agents. They directly connect to the Azure load balancer directly to the pods. So less layers. In case of analysis, that's better for us. Once this has been done, I still need, so as explained on the issue, I still need to finally clean up all the former public ACP resources. That required a lot of work because there were a lot of different resources not related to each other. So I did things, I simplified a lot of code. That was bad surprise for me, honestly, like the IPv6 things, but yeah, anyway. Um, now, after two days using only the private ACP, we still see a few errors. The, the error rate is really low. For, for uh, In two days, we had 4 million uh, successful requests and five errors. So the rate is good. Uh, however, it can still be a, a pain for the developers. So I got a few improvements in mind that I wrote on the issue. Uh, the first one will be change the Maven settings XML on CI Jenkins IO to add a few HTTP wagon uh, tuning because we could tell Maven to retry different time. And specifically, I found one. I need to check carefully the documentation. Um, I will want to have Basil advice, but he's busy, so I don't think I will try to ask immediately. But Maven try to use keep alive requests, and Nginx use keep alive requests. However, most of the timeouts are due to keep alive requests that start to pile and that are not. On long builds, that can be a problem. So I've checked the builds. Usually a build that takes less than 15 minutes, so most of the builds, that, that's okay. But for builds that takes that have a Maven instance connecting to ACP, so from the first when you the first command of Maven that downloads its clean plugin until the errors or the end of the build, when you pass the 15, let, let's say 20 minute threshold on a single agent then you start to have issues. That's because Maven and Nginx try to, to keep the same TCP connection. Disabling this is not a problem. That will add a bit of CPU strain, but our CPU are underused, even on builds. And that will force Nginx to recycle the keep lives. So more retries on client side and fine tuning the keep alive and timeouts on client side. Then also, I am. I used to have a technique that we didn't implement yet on ACP um, to, to have a kind of circuit breaker to the upstream. So the goal will be to tell Nginx, okay, if you have a timeout on that upstream, switch back to the second upstream. And you have the you can specify two or three times the same upstream, which means it starts the first line, it try one time, then stop connection, retry a second time, etc. That one would also implement on server side. I believe with both, we should push away the limit when Nginx and Maven starts having errors. However, we had four errors during last night that we cannot do anything about it, except eventually the server retries. Uh, there were five or errors on Artifactory. And so a 503 this, is? A server, uh, I don't, it's a server-side error, I don't remember exactly. Okay. But that, that means Artifactory, instead of serving data or redirection, it says, oh, that's, I, I have an error. Right, okay, service unavailable. So Service unavailable. So there's, yeah. there's nothing the caching proxy can do to resolve if upstream is unavailable. That's, exactly. if upstream is down, the caching proxy if it's got it in cache, it can answer, but if it has to get it from upstream, there is no choice. It, it simply cannot. Okay. Exactly. Uh, so we have improvement. I will be interested on if you see more errors on, on developer usage 
Um, I will want to work at least on the ACP circuit breaker, trying different retries. And I did the big discovery. I made a mistake on the initial ACP configuration one year ago. Uh, we ne so since Artifactory quite often answer redirection to the ups uh, to the upstream. So ACP request a file and then it's redirected to somewhere else, usually Amazon S3 with a token. Uh, the IPs on Amazon S3 are changing really often. As such, we had to let Nginx use dynamic resolution of the IPs. Usually servers like Nginx or Apache, they do DNS resolution only on restart on reloads. Yeah, they want to and cache DNS resolution so they're not waiting for DNS servers, right? Exactly. And they don't even emit local DNS requests. There are techniques in both, and we use one of these techniques in the case of when Nginx need to contact Artifactory, we use a technique saying, hey, always every 60 seconds updates the IP records because they can change on Amazon side. We know that Artifactory doesn't change often for the initial request, but for the redirects, that was an issue. We fixed that issue. The mistake I made is that I set the DNS resolver on Nginx to 9999 only. If 9999, uh, the quad nine server is uh, saturated, then it just fails. That explains mm. a lot of the time out issue we had that were due to that. And I'm not using the Kubernetes internal DNS resolver, which has cache and respect the TTL. So now with the new configuration, the resolver check on the local uh, cube DNS. If it times out, then it falls back to 999. So we have better safety. And clearly, it improved the situation. It's, it's not perfect, but it's better than it used to be. Mm -hmm. Without this, I was able to saturate the new private ACP with two builds if I use the proper Maven uh, resolution. And now it's going way better. So the situation improved. The error rate decreased. But I need to see a testimony from user confirming that they run heavy builds such as the bomb build, HH builds, remoting or Jenkins core build, and telling me if it's better for them or not. On my side, I will try to implement at least the server side we try, but I believe we could also improve Maven ports. But yeah, that the Maven port I will ask, I think I will want to ask on the developer mailing list if they have any easy, uh, let's say, people against this. So yeah. ACP uh, still on progress, clean up, in, clean up to do on this milestone and eventually a circuit breaker. So, and I think as you, as we continue to learn more about this, eventually we want to do a blog post that describes the experiences and what the, what the current configuration is and where people can find it. Now yeah, I had absolutely. another question. I was looking at the logs and mm -hmm. it looks like we are currently downloading from Maven Central. Is it in a future thing possible to consider caching Maven Central with ACP or is that pre for precluded by how we're structured? Uh, we are caching Maven Central already today. Oh, we are? ACP. Okay. Yes, we are. Okay. Uh, we have um, a, a thing that try to find an artifact on Artifactory mm -hmm. and if it if it doesn't, then it falls back to Maven Central. It was mandatory, otherwise we will fail when trying to download the Maven plugins. Okay, so, so and it's not that we're reaching out directly to Maven Central, we're still going through the artifact caching proxy. Exactly. Okay, because I see the message I see in the build log says downloading from, or downloaded from, and then it lists Maven Central and other times it says downloaded from uh, something that looks like an, a, a proxy name. So I'll, I'll, I'll send you a separate question, Damien. Great. Yep, no problem. The, okay. Worth checking. Okay. Um, next issue. So uh, build stuck due to GH rate limit API. So an infra CI, um, I, I need to open an issue on Jira on Gcask. So each time we trigger a Gcask reload on InfraCI, all of our multi-branch builds are re-indexed. It doesn't trigger builds, but it quickly reaches the G, uh, GitHub API rate limits. Mm -hmm. 
we are using a GitHub app, so that's already a high limit. And it looks like there is no mechanism in Jenkins that allows us to bypass this behavior. Mm. Right now, the solutions were, we tried disabling API rate limits. Um, every two reloads, we reach the API. So that just moved a bit, but it's still not usable. Uh, we we asked for help. It looks like the organization folder, when scanning for, multi, for a repository to dynamically manage the multi-branch, they have an option not to re-index when there is a change. That one could solve the problem, mm. but we don't have a job DSL automated management for organization folder. That So we need this in any case, and not of all our folders are um, good candidates. That would be a good candidate for the Docker build because all of our images are the same. We don't have exceptions. However, when it's about the infra tooling, we have exceptions. So for now, Terraform and Docker jobs are all the same with no exception. Organization mm. folder is worth implementing. In any case, right now, before that implementation, since that's really slowing us down since the past two months, Stefan complained a lot before the early days for good, for legit reasons. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to create a set of different GitHub applications on Jenkins Infra on GitHub. And we will use different GitHub application. So yes, we will have to wait 10, 30 seconds after reload time. Everything is indexed. That won't remove the indexing. However, we should not be blocked. The bill will continue working without being annoyed because we will spread the load between different areas. Good. Any question? Mm -hmm. Next step, create distinct shash apps. Uh, plugin yield score, it's on hold. Still on hold. Uh, Spring security uh, walk. Thanks. Yes. Takes Adrian's time. Right. Thanks, Adrian, for your walk. GDK21 agent. So uh, Jay is working on Windows inbound and infra CI. So that works very well. As part of the ACP thing uh, last week, I implemented the environment variable management for Windows inbound agents. So now Jay has all the road ready to add G Windows virtual machine with GDK 17 and 21. Um, and I'm working on, Damien works on the SSH uh, Windows agents. Mm, okay. Uh, I found a technique, thanks to Tim, he shared with me a repository from Microsoft, Azure slash Jenkins, and there are plenty examples, so our documentation might be interesting to point here, and there are PowerShell scripts showing the technique to set up environment variable on the whole machine. So I used it for inbound, that worked very well, so I just need to validate with our Windows OpenSSH, but that should be a breeze. Any question? No, that's great. Thank you. Cool. Um, leftover ARM64. So still LDAP to reproduce. So LDAP is using a not really up-to-date and Debian distribution. It's security updated, but not latest feature-wide. And it's Debian, while all of our other images are using Ubuntu. So. Not only we have this, but running LDAP on RM64 is also failing during authentication and we don't really see any obvious error. So now we are, uh, Stefan wanted to try to reproduce, he found some resources he added on the issue. So it's on hold, uh, but I will want to start by moving the LDAP image to a modern Ubuntu image with modern LDAP, modern OpenSSL, and then retry all of these things in order to move LDAP to ARM64. Good. To bump versions and OS of the image. Um, also, a proposal is, as I said earlier, let's merge the x86 nut pools. Right now, we, we add the the mirror, the four mirror bit instance, get Jenkins IO and update Jenkins IO. 
and LDAP. Those are the last services running on Intel. So moving them to the system pool would allow us to gain one to three machines per month. So mm. that's still a few bucks, a few hundred bucks per month. Okay. Any questions? No, that's great. Uh, update CLI, that's a long running thing. Did Azure.net. So the idea is to split in two pipelines the project itself and the update CLI automatic update. So, uh, so this one I needed, I'm, I had meant to ask you about this one separately. So is this no longer using GitHub Actions to run update CLI or no, it's, oh. it continues running them with update CLI okay. or continues so running I, them with GitHub Actions, but is doing it. it oh, okay. It depends. Okay. It depends. Um, so as discussed team wide, Mm -hmm. We do not want to move GA existing GHA update CLIs to Jenkins. Okay, good. So that is not what this is doing. This is just spreading them into separate actions. Exactly. Got it. Um, I think Hervé was a bit enthusiastic when batch creating the, the issues. Uh, right now, the scope is Terraform infra jobs and only them for now. I see. Okay, thanks. Uh, I have an issue though. Uh, it's that we used a, a, a bad behavior. We were setting a pipeline triggers on the pipeline library. So now that's messing up. So I might need to do pipeline library changes for the Terraform function to remove the pipeline trigger logic. Um, because right now, all of the Terraform jobs are not run every day because there are concurrency on setting and it's not uh, always the same order. Uh, finally, the big one, updates Jenkins IO, new update center. Uh, so a lot of fixes. I don't know if you saw the last changes, Mark. Uh, I, I think I did, but then I, yesterday, unfortunately, I had to switch off my DNS and my other changes in order to get some information that I couldn't get with the current, with the new setup. Okay. Uh, so that one should be fixed at the infinite loop. Yeah. It, checking. And, and the infinite loop seems to be fixed, but as far as I can tell, if I open azure.updates.jenkins.io and click one of the links, it now goes back to the old location. Uh, yes. Which means I, which means my Windows desktop is broken. Oh, in the sense the it's using the old IP, you mean? Well, yeah. Open so open up a web browser or right, here. Let's. Are you okay if we do the experiment? Because while you and I are here, so Azure exactly Azure .updates .jenkins .io, mm -hmm. perfect place. Now click the link for latest releases of Jenkins War, second from the bottom or third from okay. the, yes, that one, click that yes. one and watch so that, the URL at the top. Yeah, yes, it's because it's written inside the HTML file generated by the system because we use absolute, uh, absolute link. If I inspect the HTML, uh -huh. you see that the reference- Oh, it's it, okay, so it's not a relative path. All right, exactly. so then, then I thought, okay, I can get around this by putting the URL in myself. So change the URL at the top of your screen in the address yeah. bar yep. to instead be slash uh, azure.jenkins.io slash update or updates. But that's that's what the the URL from the, uh, the HTML file? Correct, right. Now, if you insert azure dot and hit that, it will, if I remember correctly, it does not take me to that page. It did not yesterday. Yes, that's true. That I, has well, been fixed. So maybe it's not deployed yet. Oh no, it now oh. is. But it's it, a few hours ago. It's or... working for you differently than it's working for me. Interesting. Azure updates Jenkins So, so is it possible that it's flash. oh with trailing slash ah ah you are magical. Thank you. My failure was I did not have the trailing slash. Thank you. That Got it. that should work. The, the without training slash, I'm trying it right now, is also doing the redirection chain. Be so, careful with your web browser cache though. 
So if I go azure.updates.jenkins. Yeah, and it may just be that it's my web browser's cache getting yeah. in the way. So if I do slash latest without the trailing slash, nope, now it works. Okay, it's happy. Great, thank you. I can go back to to my um, DN. I can DNS fix, put my DNS back and put my host table changes back. Thank you. Very good. Um, so the trick is that um, I had to implement a new feature where Nginx system when detect. So if uh, let me show the last comment. Mm -hmm. um, if the request and with .html, .json, or .txt, or is slash time, right. it's sent to mirror bits, which, because we know these files are mirrored, or should be. That's the same technique as what we have with getjenkins.io today, except Jenkins.io supports way more extension, but we can increase the list of file extensions. So we had, the, the uh, you underline a new case that I didn't took in account is when users want to see a, a directory listing. Um, so I've set up the system to rewrite when it detects it's not ending by HTML, JSON, TXT. So there is a rewrite rule as a fallback on Nginx that say, hey, append slash eventually, if there is no train slash, and index HTML. That solved the problem. So that means now, that's why you see your URL changing when you go to Azure update latest. It's because then it goes to mirrors, which says, oh, I know that index HTML file, I redirect you to whatever mirror. And you see the HTML file on the mirror. That technique remove the, the, the need to have the files on Apache. Apache on the mm. server redirections and mirror bits as well. We don't need to serve the HTML file because the HTML file is quite TV on updates Jenkins IO and the amount of requests, I think it's a third part of the traffic as far as I remember. Yeah, it's not only the JSON update, it's also the HTML files. They are quite TV okay. in outbound bandwidth. Mm -hmm. So with this, we move the outbound bandwidth. Now, the last problem I got that we used to have uh, the, the current production is an Apache server with directory listing enabled. Mm -hmm. In that case, there are no index HTML on that page. So Apache lists the content of the directory and generate dynamically that HTML page. In the new one, you don't have any Apache server. You only have the mirroring stuff, which means you end up on 404, not font. Ah. Okay. Because it's trying, as you can see on my URL, it's trying the index HTML file. Mm -hmm. So we need to find a way. We used to do this for getjenkins.io in the past years ago, but we need to find a way to generate index HTML file for each directory which doesn't have one. Ah, okay. So so that would be an okay solution. Just generate the index HTML file and yes. serve it, serve it from there. Okay. And ideally we should do the same for uh, getjenkins.io the same technique. Maybe in one or two years, we could merge get and update Jenkins IO on the same service. Mm. Uh, back to the topic. So now um, we have this, so we need to have the, the uh, that part. Um, I want to add data dog monitoring and update Jenkins IO on all the different cases we have here on production. They should work and keep working. Mm -hmm. So we are alerted if one of these files is missing, like the, the current page, etc. Right. I need to add one without pager duty alert on Azure update Jenkins IO. Same list of resources so we can compare. And if we, we find a new case, we can add it on the monitoring. Hmm. That will help communication on here. Um, I'm working on mirror bits tuning DAO because since we now have an update every five minutes by the update center and mirror bits concurrently try to check data, there are cases where um, the, the GitHub actions fails when trying to retrieve the plugin.json file. It's ephemeral errors, and after one hour, if you do it once, an hour, you won't see the error, but we do it every three minutes. Okay. We try to pull every three minutes. Um, I found different elements, but right now that require me to work on uh, refactoring the, the, the Helm chart, 
because that's the third time we have been beaten by the fallback set up with the wrong information, the mirror fallback system. We we had twice on Get Jenkins IO, that's the first time on this one, because the whole mirror bit configuration is a secret and a sensitive value, while the only secret thing is the Redis password and the Redis hostname eventually. Ah. So I'm currently working on this, and once we will see publicly the values that will be easier to uh, to find issues. And then I will do fine tuning. I want the repository to inc to check regularly, but more than every five minutes, which is the default. So still room to update and migrating Redis database on the same instance as get Jenkins IO. So this is the work in progress here, uh, but I'm, yeah, it's going on a good direction. I'm really happy with the, the direction we are going here. Very good. No, I, I just saw one more possible to add to your yes. things to consider. So the um, I'm used to opening the updates.jenkins.io latest page, copying the URL and appending question mark mirror list so that I can so that I can um, check the status of the mirroring of a thing. So choose any one of the links on this page, Damien. Okay. And just copy the link. And then paste that link and append question mark mirror list on the end. This is the mark weight way of checking the, the mirroring system. So hit enter. And what it does is it goes through get.jenkins.io and now presents the mirroring status. However, if I do the same thing on azure.updates.jenkins.io, I don't get the same result. Oh, interesting. Oh, you do? I do. Huh. Okay. You, you have caching. The redirection is cached by web browser. That's all for. Well, but but the other is mine is actually eastamerica.cloudflare.jenkins.io. So maybe my problem is I'm I need to just change it to Azure.updates. Um, that also means so when you if you see this kind of problem. Oh, it works. Okay, great. So Azure works. Okay, cool. And mine um, works the way yours does, so long as I, I use the azure.updates.jenkins.io URL. Good. Okay, so I think I believe that could be interesting for you to try again the DNS technique. So right. everything Which is sent to Azure. You, mm -hmm. as I said, you might lose some pages, the index directory, but right. that should be the only one. Most of the directories already have an index, great. so I'm interested on. Trying again as if we are were doing the brownout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, that's the DNS technique to do the brownout has been great for me. I've seen comparable performance or potentially better. No, no, no negative loss of performance, and it's been well behaved with only one exception, cool. and that Happy. that one exception I noted in that issue in the ticket. That's cool. Good. Thank, thanks for taking the time. By the way, all of our controllers are using uh, this new update center with three different methods. Uh, we have the Docker image that used the Jenkins plugin CLI. That's the one having failures because it runs often. Uh, CI, Trusted, and Cert are using the DNS technique. So they think they connect to update Jenkins IO, but in fact, they connect to the new one and they work very well. I haven't seen any error on the logs. And Infra CI is using Azure so it's directly using Azure domain name, and then it uses the current update center for redirection. So it's a mix of both. Right. No error either. So that's why I'm quite confident we need to find all the, let's say, edge cases that we missed. Mm -hmm. Good for you? Excellent. Thank you, Damien. This is looking, I'm, I'm very pleased. Thank you, thank you. Quite a delight. So I got a few issues. I will add the link properly. At what for the next milestone, but we have account Jenkins IO, so find a way to disindex the, the faulty page and update the, the web pages here. Mm -hmm. Ubuntu 24 campaign, so that doesn't include Puppets Jenkins VM and uh, Update Center Jenkins VM, but all the other virtual machines, Packer Image and Docker Images using Ubuntu 22 should migrate to 24 since it's available. Uh, let's say the go no go is right now Docker packaging. Basil opened the pull requests. The pull requests 
works on my machine, on this machine, on team machine, but doesn't work inside infra CI. So we need to find the reason for this. Then we will move to Packer images. And that part I expect will be handled by Stefan and Jay. We already started to think about labels with Jay on the 21 thing. We had it some this, silently some Ubuntu without the 22. And we might want to keep Ubuntu. Uh, and yeah, that's all for this one. So no immediate action, expect debugging the build error for Docker packaging. And we have Datadog plugin to update on CI Jenkins IO. With our usual, be very careful when updating. Exactly. I uh, with uh, we will announce to developers. I will try to do it early or, or up morning to have less impact on our US friends. And um, yeah, uh, we need a backup right before. Yes. And Thank I you. might send to you, Mark, uh, the procedure to restore the snapshot. In case if you see something during the night and I'm not available, then yes, we will lose a few build records, but at least we will go back to our previous known state. Right. Good. If it happened. And finally, one issue from so this Jamie. one. This one is actually a duplicate. Oh, cool. It's a duplicate of number 3815 that was reported. November of 2023. Unfortunately, our attempts to fix it November of 2023 failed. Okay, can I ask you to to comment and close the issue? I, uh, well, so to the new do, one? do we want it? Yes. Are we okay closing the old issue and letting the new one be the one that lives? That I think would be my preference. Yes, absolutely. Great. Okay, so three eight one five. Three eight one five. five. Right. And and the answer is we didn't find a way to solve it back in November. We attempted the solution, but the solution was worse than the problem. And it may be that now there's a new a new thing we need to do because the the we need a better solution, etc. Okay. Can I let you merge yes, the issue? I will take care of that. Cool. Yep. Thanks. That's all for me. Let's check for if we have recent issues. No, I don't see new issues since then. Okay. So I believe we can proceed. So I'm going to stop screen sharing. So for people watching us, see you next week. Stop recording.